Hello, welcome back to my bench. If this is your first time, my name's Dave. Hello. I work on uh, mostly radio station equipment and some ham gear. Um, and uh, I go down to component level and fix things. Today on the bench we have a uh, Symmetrix 525. This is a good little uh, dual gated compressor and limiter. Expander gate, compressor li limiter gate. It, it's nice little box. Um, you could run it in dual single mode where you've got um, one one uh, signal going in here and another one going in here and completely isolated or you push the stereo button and these controls didn't do anything these you know function for both sides uh, you could turn it off and turn it on <laughs> as far as going uh, being used or not uh, and they were pretty good little little devices uh, and they still are They're, they've got quite a following out there this one came in with a complaint saying that uh, the right channel would uh, drop in and out uh, and not work anymore for some reason. Um, and the only thing I could find on it <clears throat> was this uh, mono stereo switch uh, may have been flaky. Every once in a while you could get it to do something, but it's been burning for days and now and it's fine. Um, the other thing I did is I replaced the caps that needed replaced in it. Uh, and everything is fine and it works good. However, one of the things you have to do with these is you have to uh, set up the symmetry on the uh, VCA, voltage controlled amplifiers. There's two of them, one over here and one over here. Uh, in this particular one, it's a DBX2150A. This particular model is almost impossible it is impossible that i can tell to find any schematics on it i have schematics and stuff for uh another model that uses a completely different vca and layout everything is different and uh so i just had to sort of go through this and figure out where stuff was uh the vcas that we're going to uh, play with today are over here on this side we're just going to do this side so i can show you and the point of this is to show you how you can do it with inexpensive equipment the way you're supposed to do this is you're supposed to uh, feed it a signal uh, i am feeding this thing right now a signal of five kilohertz at three volts the three volts isn't magical it's just easy to see and use on the uh, on the scopes and you Let's take a look at the manual, and I'll show you what, what it means. It says that the symmetry control is uh, set by observing the distortion at the output of the conven uh, at a conventional signal level, which we've got 3 volts, and unity gain, which that's inside of here, and adjusting the control for a minimum second harmonic distortion. Uh, a 1 kilohertz low distorted sine wave should be applied to the input, uh, while the distortion analyzer or spectrum analyzer is used to monitor the output of the current to voltage converter op amp, which in this case is this guy right here, this one here and that one over there. Um, and adjust the RSIM, uh, which we'll see in a minute, uh, to, for a minimum 2 kilohertz product at the output. Second harmonic distortion should be lower than 0.01% for adjustment. Well, that's all nice and good, but I'll tell you what. A whole lot of us out there, a whole lot of you and me until recently, didn't have a low-frequency spectrum analyzer. They are expensive, and they're getting very hard to get a hold of. Um, I suppose you could buy a new one out there someplace, but... Uh, you don't run into this that often, and it's really not worth that kind of effort to put the money into it when there's other ways to do it. You could also use a, um, a distortion analyzer, but again, most of us and most of you out there in the, that don't do this for a living or full-time hobby or whatever you want to call it don't have one of those around. However, most of you do have some sort of 
um, scope out there. And some of the scopes will be able to use what's called FFT, uh, Fast Fourier Transformation. If you've got one, you've probably never messed with it. In most cases, you're not going to. What the Fast Fourier Transformation is, is it gives you, um, instead of uh, amplitude over time, which you get on a regular scope, where you've got the, the sine wave or whatever wave you've got, uh, versus the time across the scope, this shows you amplitude to frequency in fast Fourier transformation, FFT. Well, you can do that with a really cheap scope. I'm going to do it with that $60 HandTech scope and um, Open HandTech, which is free. Uh, you just go get it and you can run it on your uh, little $60 scope. And we'll see how well this thing works. So let's bring up the, there's the scope right there. Now you notice that I've got it, right now I've got it set up on one volt. Um, yeah, one volt up here because I've got three volts going in. I want it to show and it's, it's going to be somewhere around there. Uh, on channel one, uh, about 200 microseconds. That's just because it's five kilohertz. And uh, I've got this spectrum down here set at SP1, which means spectrum analyzer for channel one. Over here on this side, come on, you know, over here on this side, you've got your spectrum analyzer base and your channel one up here. So we'll take our scope probe and we'll put it, it says, at the output of this amp which the output of this amp is pin one there we go all right now what we've got we'll bring this one over to here and that's going to show us there and how do i get another one oops oh there we go we'll bring one over to here someplace and we'll bring this one over to here. Now, if you look, you can see that my the frequency of my first marker, which is here, is at 5 kilohertz. And the second marker is at 9.96, somewhere around there, kilohertz. We're going to kind of get that out of the way so you can see what's going on. So, we're looking at the frequency here and a... Uh, a, a plot of the frequency going out. So in our case, this would be the second harmonic at 10 kilohertz, five times two, 10 kilohertz. What you want to do is you want to take your diddling tool, whatever you've got, into the symmetry adjust pot and watch that 10 kilohertz um, bump there. And we're going to turn that down. And down it goes. And you see the 10, the three, the three up there that's starting to bounce over on your right. If we take our uh, marker, let's go on the other side of this, take our marker, go over here. You notice that that says 15 kilohertz. That's your third harmonic. So our second harmonic is here. And our third harmonic is here right over come here right there so you want to diddle with it to get it so that your lowest second harmonic no third harmonic and about as flat as you could possibly get it which is right about there there's almost nothing there now I got this set for about 10 DB there are limitations on this I can't go any lower because if I go any lower I can't get this back on the screen. And if you go any higher, that's 60. If you go any higher, um, you won't you won't have a, a decent looking signal. So let's tweak that just a little bit more. Yeah, that's about as good as I can get it. Now. I'm going to show you on the spectrum analyzer. Here's the spectrum analyzer. 
it is accurate to 9 kilohertz, and we're doing it on 5 here. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of down below where it's accurate, but it will work. You can see that I've got it set with a 10 kilohertz center frequency, 10 kilohertz span. Uh, <clears throat> so that's going to give me both whole sides of both sides. Um, and uh, my marker right now is at 10.4 kilohertz. My, uh, let's see, where is it? Um, my frequency, my frequencies are set up there and my amplitude is set up on log. And the attenuation is set to, you know, to auto with a reference level of about 35 dBm. And let's take a look at that same point where we were looking at before. And you can see there over here, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can see this, um, my mouse or not. But if you look over here on this side where it says reference level 35 dBm, that is my... Uh, that, that's the 10 kilohertz or the 5 kilohertz lump and down in where the marker is is the 10 kilohertz so let's lump technical term so let's tune this up and see what we get there we go we're going on one side of the of the symmetry pot and back down to the other side of the symmetry pot so we'll take it down just as low as we possibly can which is right about there all right all right the reason we did that with five was because my spectrum analyzer just won't go any farther so let's go back over to here uh set the function generator to uh where'd you go function generator so that I can see it too. Here it is. Okay. Uh, set the function generator to one kilohertz, like it says in the book. All right. And now bring up the, the scope. So we're going to do this like the book says. We're still over here on... Um, yeah, we're still, everything is all set up like it was. So now we'll do this. Now you can see here we've expanded this way out because we're on one kilohertz. So let's, let's take this down, up. Come on, mouse, you can do this. There we go. And take this down to f 500 so that we can see it, okay? Well, you only got a choice of 500 or 200. So we are on 1 kilohertz now. Take a marker over. And this should be 2 kilohertz. Okay? So now we're going to adjust this down on this spec end, or on this fast Fourier, down on the 1 kilohertz side. That's the other side. That's right down at the very bottom that's about the best we can do so at one kilohertz input it was off a little bit and we want to make sure that we're doing it like the book says anyway that's how you can use a cheap sixty dollar oscilloscope with fast Fourier transformation to line up these um, uh, VCAs in in these uh, well, they're in lots of things, actually. The, the many, many devices use these. Let's take a look at this side and see what it says. Hello. Wrong probe. Too many probes in the bench. Uh, so this one's off a little bit. Let's get this side. Okay. None, they're not going to be perfect, but it says to go for the second looks like our third harmonics have pumped up a little bit, but, you know, it's it says to go for the second the best we can. So, all right, there's both of them set up the way they're supposed to be. Anyhow, if you like these kind of videos, let me know. Uh, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. 
Um, and uh, don't forget, I've got a Patreon channel now. And uh, if you want to support me on the Patreon channel, that'd be nice. It's uh, Patreon slash AERV blog. And uh, give this thing a thumbs up because uh, this is kind of interesting. Until next time. <laughs>